come and, and lead the meditation for us. And so we're very uh, grateful to have coming to the stage Guru Jagat. Guru Jagat. This is her theme song. Let's hear it. What, what song is this? It's Drake, uh, Big Ring. You, you saw that one coming, right? Drake. All right. Guru Jagat, take it away. Thank you. I was actually just um, saying to Shabit Preet, who's part of my team, why I love this song. Um, because on some level, you know, I heard it at my gym, and I was like, this is our song. Because on some level, it's talking about kind of in a weird way, uh, a new way of prosperity, which is like, I don't just need the big rings, my team needs the big rings, you know? I mean, that's where we're sharing, it's the Aquarian age. We call it the Aquarian age, um, this age that we're in, which part of uh, these kind of gatherings, the fact that you're all here and this is happening on a Saturday night and all of you wanna be here and you're participating to be here, uh, this is indicative of a change that's happening in consciousness on the planet, and I'm really happy about it. Are you guys wow. happy about it? <laughs> I'm really relieved to be here and to see that, you know, there are people on the planet that want to spend their Saturday night like this, so thank you for creating the space for it, and um, the whole team, all of you guys, you deserve some really big rings. They better be coming with no strings. Um, <laughs> see, it's poetry. Um, so the space that I'd like to open up tonight um, is a space that is around going deeper and around not just being kind of in the uh, spiritual tourism zone um, or the kind of uh, amuse-bouche of it all, but actually going into a deeper space and becoming a true practitioner. And you know, the difference between being a do-gooder -go um, and being what they call a bodhisattva in the tradition, in the kind of uh, Buddhist traditions is that, you know, do-gooder is kind of this, uh, this uh, external idea of you maybe do some things that are good sometimes. And the difference of going deeper into being a bodhisattva, this is the word I like to use, but it's a fancy word for saying that you make decisions throughout your day that is about the good of humanity and maybe uh, putting other people, uh, other sentient beings, their needs, their desires, their wishes, their sorrows, their suffering ahead of your own neuroses. It's a revolution. It is, and I talk about this all the time. It's revolutionary to spend some time in your day clearing enough space where you're not just habitually, you know, checking your phone and habitually in the whole cycle of all of your kind of neurotic thought forms that all base down into one root thought form, which is there is something definitely wrong with you. Definitely because you were born a sinner. We don't know what's gonna happen, but you're, you know, something's wrong. And so you need to buy something or do something or get something or change something to, you know, try to remediate the original situation, which is there's something wrong with you. So we spend basically not just this lifetime, but possibly many lifetimes running around chasing the kind of habitual patterns of our own neurotic thought forms that there's something wrong with us and we have to do something about that. And so we don't spend a lot of time actually clearing enough space where we would make someone else's suffering more important than our own because all we can think about is our own suffering. You get where I'm going with that? Do you guys suffer at all? No. From your own habitual thoughts? No? Okay, we have an enlightened crowd. This is exciting. Did you was it a prerequisite that they're enlightened in order to get a ticket? Okay, um, so uh, this is part of kind of what we're, what we're interested in and the mindfulness portion and why it's such a beautiful thing that meditation and mindfulness is becoming really uh, all the rage on the planet because if you take some time to make some space for some catharsis or some revelation of your own whatever you are, your 
mystery. If you take some time to do that, then the kind of habitual chasing of your tail starts to reorganize and you can start to pay attention to some of the incredible acts of creativity and elegance of each moment. You know, I believe this is a Chogyam Trungpa, He's a, he was a Rinpoche. This is his definition of enlightenment, which is that you have the energy, the clarity, they call it prajna, but the clarity of mind, the energy of body, to be able to, in every moment, now this is a spiritual practice, in every moment, or maybe just a couple moments during the day, you have the energy to bring the elegance out of the moment, or out of the person, or out of the situation, or out of the, you know, wherever you are in your day. And Kundalini Yoga is a householder's practice, and so we're not into meditating in caves and, you know, giving up your material possessions, obviously by my theme song, um, and all my rings. Uh, but, you know, we're not into that. We're into as a householder who has to raise children and you know create businesses and make money and go about your day and be in traffic and all these other things um, and be an artist of all the ways that you are an artist whether you know it or not how can we in those very ordinary moments bring the elegance out make make elegant beautiful moments and that's enlightenment and I, I like that definition because it's real and it, in anybody, literally, in one moment, that can be you. You can have that experience. So it's very practical. It's not some pie in the sky thing. So spirituality becomes not a caricature of itself. Because part of my job on the planet is to kind of uh, break the caricatures of spirituality. We call it spiritual materialism. And in the ways that we kind of uh, take, you know, we, we separate our regular life from kind of what it would look like to be a spiritual person. And instead, you know, let's listen to some hip hop, bring the elegance out in some hip hop. Let's, you know, in the midst of a moment of, you know, parenting where you're not at your best, you bring the elegance out in that moment when you're challenged. You know, I know there's some entrepreneurs here. I'm an entrepreneur and we're, you know, really mentally ill. And, um, you know, in those moments, in the trenches of why am I doing this? It's certainly not to make money. Um, <laughs> in those moments, you know, how do we show up? How do we bring the elegance out in those moments? And that's true spirituality. It's not like having mala beads and, you know, going to India and, you know, I mean, it's not, that whole kind of caricature of spirituality is totally dead. And so now, just regular people, just everyone, all of us and everyone can have a moment of true enlightenment by making a choice in a moment to choose something bigger than your own neurotic, habitual, there's something wrong with me thoughts. And in that moment, you create a revolution. Are we ready to create a revolution? Okay. So should we do a little meditation? So kundalini, who, who's never done a kundalini yoga situation? Okay, good. Um, so it's a little different than if you've done like a mindfulness meditation or, or a Vedic meditation or whatever. It's a little more, um, colorful <laughs> but we're gonna keep it we'll keep it chill I'd like to do definitely one I'm, I'm gonna give you a couple things because I'd like you to take something home with you because my thing is like okay we can meditate for a couple minutes here and that's fine and you can like Instagram it and you know hashtag it and whatever but I want you to practice I want you to become a practitioner even if it's 90 seconds a day you can do that and you can become a practitioner and you can, you know, something real can happen to you. And the thing I love about Kundalini Yoga and why I've devoted my life to it is that it's fast and efficient because I'm impatient and I like results. So I'll let's, let's, I'm going to introduce you to it a little bit. I'll give you a couple things that you could take home with you and, um, and you can start to practice them and they will totally change your life. Money back uh, guarantee? No. 
we'll give, we'll give him the money to charity, is you know, just, you know. Um, okay, so this is what we do. We bring the palms together, and we're gonna tune in with a mantra. You, you know, some of you are Kundalini people, so you're gonna know the mantra. If you don't know the mantra, just make some sound, because sound changes consciousness, and the sound, it goes om, O-N-G, not O-M, because you know some of you guys are yogis, not O-M, it's om, namo, guru, dev, namo, but just you know, stumble through it, move your mouth, because when you move your mouth and your tongue, what changes? Any neuroscientists in here? No? Too bad, because I really have a thing for neuroscientists. Okay, uh, <laughs> like a real thing. Okay, take an inhale. Your brain changes, exhale. Inhale. Om Namo Guru Namo Om together and just for a moment feel you can feel how the sound just even changed this room already and exhale now say what you are going to take this meditation and do it say you're in like in your car and you're about to go into the you know cross campus your office and um, you just, you know, you're not going to get all fancy like that. You can just go om namo guru dev namo, om namo guru dev namo, om namo guru dev namo. Okay, fingers in like this, thumbs out. This is called medical meditation for habituation. I give it to everybody because it helps you with your habitual thought forms. It's so good. And so we put them on here, the thumbs on the, uh, what is called a temple. And the Greeks called it that for a reason. This is a holy place. And now you're gonna squeeze the back of your molars, kind of like you get a little squeeze, don't break any caps or anything, okay? You squeeze a little bit and feel something move under these thumbs. And then mentally you're gonna uh, say to yourself, sa, ta, na, ma, with each squeeze. So it coordinates, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. You coordinate sa, ta, na, ma. And breathe through your nose, close your eyes. It'll be the longest, you know, two minutes you've ever spent. space, maybe louder than some of the other distractions.
Put in for now. Hold my breath. Hold my breath and focus right between the eyebrows. This is the pituitary gland that's responsible for the evolution of the human brain and the human consciousness. placing hands in this lock of the forefinger to the thumb. It creates a circuit in the brain that helps you to be more intuitively intact. You're gonna breathe in seg uh, eight segments in through the nose and then one full exhale through the nose. So this is a breath for stress and releasing stress out of the system. So you'll inhale eight strokes. And then one full exhale. And close your eyes and again focus up and in right the center of the forehead. As you get it, take the breath even deeper, each segment deeper, full exhale. Besides wanting seconds for dinner, see if you can deepen the breath for this last minute, as deep as you can, the fullest filling of the breath, the fullest clearing, releasing of the breath. Take a full inhale. Hold the breath. Sit up taller. Feel your own dignity. Feel your bravery, your courage, all the things you've faced in your life, the ways that you've expanded. Exhale. Inhale. Hold the breath and Squeeze through the rectum sex organs navel. It's called mula bandha. You're squeezing, you're sitting up taller, you're focusing right at the center of the forehead and project now this clear vision into the future. How more of you will be available to help others, help humanity. Exhale. Inhale. Hold the breath. 
focus and the word to yourself is victory. Wherever you need to show up more, give more, be more generous, be more wide. You can do uh, these little meditations for any amount of time. You know, three minutes is a good dose. And um, if you want to, you know, learn more about it, we can help you out to do it. But uh, just a little practice will go a long way. So thank you. Satnam.